number 27 of the Happy Little Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany, where I live with my boyfriend. Um, and today I want to talk to you about knitting, spinning and life in general. Um, so if you're watching me for the very first time, thank you so much for watching. I feel like I've got fluff in my face. Um, and if you're coming back every week, then thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you guys who subscribed and keep following me and yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so today is Sunday, 28th of February, and I actually wanted to record on Monday, but because there's a few things happening tomorrow, I had already written down my show notes and I had everything set up. So I just figured why don't I just record an episode now and that way I'll have more time tomorrow. So here I am. I feel like I'm a little bit all over the place because I maybe haven't prepared as much as I usually do. Not that you guys would notice me preparing because I'm generally a bit chaotic. But anyways, thank you so much for joining me. Um, so today I want to talk about 1FO, some works in progress, some spinning, some sewing, some acquisitions. I want to do a new segment about socks, so the socks that I've knitted and how they've worn, how they've washed and so on. I have a question to answer, I have a coupon code for you guys, and then I'll talk about life in general. So before I start all that, um, very quickly I wanted to give a shout out to Katie of the Inside Number 23 podcast. Hi Katie! Um, I really, really enjoy her podcast. I know that so many people have talked about it and it took me a very long time to actually sit down and just watch an episode because usually I struggle to even keep up with my regular episodes of podcasts, so I'm sometimes a bit lazy in trying new podcasts. But within five minutes, I really, really knew that I was going to love her podcast and that, that I was going to become her regular. And yeah, so I can only urge you to watch it because I really, really love her personality. I love that she loves Harry Potter because I love that too. And she's doing a Harry Potter cow, which I think is awesome. And I really do want to participate in that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention really quickly is um, Regina of the Herbstblatt Regina podcast. A few uh, weeks back she released her Fall in Love collection, which is a cabled hat, mitten and cowl. And I actually won a copy of her entire collection, thanks to someone on Instagram who tagged me on her giveaway. So thank you so much to Regina and also to G who tagged me. And now I just need to decide what I want to knit first. Now I will uh, move on to my one finished object and those of you who've been watching for a few weeks know that I'm wearing it. So I am wearing my Color Reflection Shawl by Vera Valimaki. And this is what it looks like. Um, honestly, I love it, but I don't really know how to wear it. I love wearing it because it is crazy huge and I will take it off in a second. But I don't know how to wear it in a way that actually looks all right, because most of the time I just wear it as a shawl slash scarf slash blanket. And yeah. Anyways, I finished it. And I will just try to show you, which is quite hard because it is um, two meters and 60 centimeters long. So it is crazy long. But this is what it looks like. Uh, I'm not really sure if you guys can even see that, but I think you can get an idea. So like I said, it's very huge. Um, and the three colors that I used is Cascade Heritage in gray, ha Cascade Heritage in charcoal, which is the dark gray, and the pink slash slightly fuchsia orange sort of colorway is by a German indie dyer called Sternenstabwolle, and the colorway is called Rosa Tulpen, which means pink tulips. So like I said, this shawl is huge. I really, really love it. I love how the colors play together. I'm really, really happy with that selection. And this was this was all from Stash, so that makes me even more happy. Um, the only alteration that I did to the pattern was you're supposed to knit a, I don't know, a five centimeter garter border at the bottom. And with my color combination, that would have been the dark gray. But I tried to use up some old scraps, so I only had about 50 grams of this dark grey, which I thought would be enough, but it turns out it wasn't. So I had enough to finish the, uh, the short row section, which is the section that I'm showing you right now. 
but I knew I wasn't going to have enough to do um, the garter bind off. But I thought I would have enough to do an I-cord bind off instead, because I really like doing I-cord edges on garter stitch holes. But then I, it turned out I didn't have enough for that either, so I did a I-cord bind off with the pink, which looks like this. And honestly, I'm really, really happy how it turned out because the shawl is large enough as it was and I wanted to get it finished because I had something that needed to be started. And I really like how the eye cord bind off, it's not too floppy, but at the same time it doesn't tighten the shawl, so it's just perfect. And yeah, it gives it just a little bit of stability, which I really like. So all in all, I'm really, really happy with the shawl. I'm I really wanted to knit this for a while, so I'm glad I did. I don't think I will knit another one that soon because it was a crazy amount of knitting. Honestly, these rows were very, very long. But yeah, I really enjoyed it and I'm happy that I managed to have nice yarns in my stash that I could use. So that's that and I'll take it off now just because it's quite warm in here. Oh, and I knit this on 4mm Knit Pro Nova interchangeable needles. So I think that's all you needed to know about that. And I will move on to works in progress. So for works in progress, I um, was asked last week by the lovely Agatha, who is Am Amanita on Ravelry, and she has some gorgeous designs. And I was asked by her if I want to do a test knit for her. So she's releasing a new lacy shawl pattern. And I was really, really flattered because my first test knit but that's also the reason why I wanted to finish the color reflection as soon as possible because the deadline I think for me is quite tight so I'll try and I've been knitting like crazy on it and I can't show you that so I can show you the yarns that I'm using because I thought that you might still find that interesting and I think my phone is ringing oh well I'll let it ring so I needed three colors for the shawl and again I used all stash and the first one I used is this gray, it's Isagar um, Alpaca 2, and I'll show you the label in a second. And this light, super light grayish pink, which is the same yarn. They, these two are both Isagar, and I will show you the label. So here is this Isagar, or is, I don't know how to say that. It's Alpaca 2, and these are 50 gram skeins that are 250 meters per skein. So this is a light fingering weight. And the third yarn that I'm using is also from Stash. You might recognize this. Um, I was knitting a Vera Valimaki pattern with this yarn that I completely messed up and had to frog. And this is Mirasol Sulca Legato. Oops. And this is in the colorway 15, which I think is called Plum. So the other two, these are 50% Peruvian wool, 50% alpaca. And this one is, let me see, 60% merino, 20% alpaca, 20% silk. So I think these three go quite well together. And like I said, I'm trying to knit from stash. And in this case, I needed to knit from stash because I needed to start right away. So I'm really excited about this test knit and I will tell you more about it when um, it is finished or when the pattern is released. And I'm keeping this in a new bag that I picked up. This is a simple drawstring bag and we went to Bertheim Village which is like a big brand out at the center. And in this store, which I can never pronounce, I think it's called L'Occitane. L Occ L Occ L Occ um, they were selling these um, printed bags or travel bags or whatever for like a dollar. So I just picked one up and I think it works perfectly. So that was my work in progress number one. I hope you guys didn't find that boring because I couldn't actually show you. Um, and everything else that I've been working on is socks. So. Like I said, I haven't knit that much on them. I hope you guys don't mind. But I'm working on two pairs of socks, which I cast on at the same time. And these socks are socks um, from Felt Fusion Yarn, Felt Fusion on Etsy. And this was one of her colorways that I got in her 
yarn box or yarn club. It is on her sparkle sock. It is 400 meters per 100 grams. And this stitch marker is where I was last week. So you can see I've knit a little bit, but not crazy amounts. So this is a plain stock in its uh, sock. I'm doing 64 stitches. I did a twisted rib and I'm knitting them two at, two at a time and I'm knitting on my knit for another 2.25mm um, needle. And this one is obviously not interchangeable because I don't think they go down, but it's a fixed circular needle. And this is living in my bag that I won from Mina, who is the knitting expert and Mina makes on Etsy. And this is the perfect size for socks, so I really, really love it. And my other pair of socks um, leads me into sewing as well, because I, they, it's living in my project bag that I made. But I'll show you the socks first. These are the handspun socks that I'm knitting from my own handspun. And I'm just going to show you one cake. So that looks like this. This is, um, the fiber was from Fondant Fiber. It's her deep and meaningful colorway and it's her merino nylon blend. And I'm sorry, the cake is a bit of a mess. And this is the first yarn that I've ever spun for socks and I'm really, really happy how it, how it's knitting up. So, these are the socks. Again, you can see I've knit a little bit, but not crazy far. I'm also noticing that with hand spun yarn, it's, I'm a little bit slower with knitting it. I think just because it's a two ply, it's a little bit more splitty and I need to be careful about it. But I'm also knitting these on 64 stitches, 2.25 millimeter needles. These are my Addy Premiums. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with them and I'm taking my time with my socks at the moment. So yeah, I think that's about it. And so now I'll just move on straight into sewing. So I finally sat down on my sewing machine again and decided to make another project bag. And the one I made, this is, I think I finally figured out which size I like. So this is just slightly bigger than Mina's sock bag, but it's relatively similar. And I used all fabrics from my stash. So I got this, I got like 10 of those pink slippers when I was in Vietnam. And I got this for the outer fabric, which is a little bit, like it's quite sturdy and thick. So I thought that works really well without lining, uh, without interfacing. And then for the in inside, I'm using this fabric. So if you've been watching for a long time, you might realize that these fabrics look familiar. And that's because I have made a project bag in the past just the opposite way. So the one that I made before is quite a lot bigger and it has this on the outside and this one has the inside fabric, which is actually quite confusing to me now. I don't know, somehow it feels weird to have two project bags that are essentially twins because they're just the opposite ways with the lining and the outside fabric. But I'm really, really happy with this bag. I am not very good at sewing, but I feel like this one turned out really, really well. Like all of our bag, it bags, it has a box bottom. So yeah, it's pretty perfect for knitting socks and it's a little bit softer than Mina's bag or you know any, any interface bag, but it is quite sturdy just because the fabrics are not super thin. So I'm quite happy with it. And I just attached um, the slipper pull, which I got from Denise. So yeah, apparently I got through all of my knitting and my sewing in 14 minutes. That's pretty good. Um, so I think I will move. What should I do first? I think I'll talk about my socks first because, um, so last week I washed a lot of socks because for a while I had just kind of let them pile up my dirty socks. So instead of what I usually do when I just, you know, wash, hand wash them as I wear them, I had this crazy amount of socks that needed to be washed. So I threw them all in the washing machine um, in a cold wash, cold full cycle, which worked out well. And then I decided that I'll lay them all on the ground and block them out or, you know, um, I've actually let them dry lying down. So I had this crazy army of socks um, in my living room, which was quite fun. 
and I shared a few photos on Instagram and I asked if you guys would be interested to hear a little bit more about my socks and how they've been wearing and which yarns I have been liking and so on. So you guys said you were interested in that, so I have picked a few socks that I want to talk about. And I've picked these just because they were the ones where I could actually remember what kind of yarn I used and yeah, I thought they were quite good examples. I think all of these are German yarns, some of them commercial, some of them indie dyed. And I will just go through them. Oops. So the first pair that I pulled out, apparently I still haven't known in the ends. I do that sometimes. This is a pair that I've knit a few months ago. These are Hermione's Everyday Socks. And this is the first time that I've used Drachenrolle, which is a German yarn, like I said. And I will just put the names of the shops in the corner or somewhere down there. And all of these will be linked in the show notes. So this is Drachenwolle in their merino sock. And when I started knitting with this, I immediately decided that this is my favorite sock base ever. And I think a few times now they have been hand washed and they've also been machine washed. And they are still completely fine. I think even on the soles, they're pretty much perfect. There's basically no felting at all. They're nice and tight. There's a tiny bit of pillowing at the top, but honestly, I wear my socks really, really hard. So if these socks hold up, that means that the yarn is pretty good because I'm really rough with my socks. So yeah, the sock base is nice and soft and I, I would really, really recommend this. And it is relatively affordable as well. So this is definitely one of my favorite sock bases. And I have one more skein lying around, which wants to be knitted and I can't wait. Then the second pair of socks that I wanted to show you are from another indie dyer who I've mentioned quite a few times, so I figured it's only fair if I talk about it. And this is Jan from Tausendschön. If you remember last week I showed you a pair of This Way and That Way socks by Mina Philipp. And I also knit them in the same yarn base. So this is Tausendschön in their, I think it's just called their standard sock base. So it's not their luxury merino base, it's just their standard base, but already this base, it is really, really soft. It's a lot less sturdy and more soft than many other German sock yarns. So I really, really like it. I really, really enjoy knitting with this one because it is so soft and yeah, it just feels really wonderful without... Sometimes when yarns are too soft, I feel like they'll fall apart right away. But this one feels, you know, sturdy enough to hold up, but at the same time, it's just a little bit nicer and a little bit more luxurious. So I really love this base. And again, I've worn this quite a few times. And because it is a little bit more softer, it is a little bit more fuzzed up. I'm not even sure if you can see that. It has slight pilling, but I mean, that is to be expected if you're knitting with soft yarn. So I'm really happy with it. No holes, no nothing. So I think if you like a little bit more luxurious yarn, I think this one will make you really, really happy. And like I said, this is only their standard socks. This is not, this is not one of their fancy bases. So yeah, again, I can really, really recommend that. Um, then I pulled out this pair of socks, which is really, really old. This is one of the first, well, not the one of the, maybe when it was in the first couple of months of sock knitting. And uh, as you can see, I haven't woven in my ends after years. I used to do that a lot. I would just, you know, tuck the ends in and wear them. But anyways, what, I've, what you can see is I've knit a cable along the leg of the sock, down to the heel. I did a heel gusset and heel flap, and then just a socket sock at the bottom. And this yarn is um, Regia Tweed which is a yarn that I really, really like. It's a commercial yarn. It is relatively inexpensive. And like I said, I've had this for years and still it is holding up really, really well. There is some pilling a little bit, but this yarn is so, so wearable. And honestly, this, uh, like I haven't been hand washing this. I just threw this in the washer like a thousand times and Still, I can wear them. The only fault that I have with these is that they're a little bit tight, which is because I didn't know what gauge to knit my socks at and not doesn't have anything to do with the yarn itself. 
So I really, really enjoy these tweed yarns. I've knit my boyfriend another pair of socks out of this yarn, but out of the sport weight version. So they have a four ply and a six ply, I think. And again, they've held up relatively well. And yeah, I think for a commercial sock yarn, this one is really, really great. Sorry, I just turned on the lights, so I hope that now you can see a little bit better what I'm showing you guys. So the next pair of socks is one that I don't like at all, and I thought it's only fair to share that too. So these are the next socks that I wanted to show you. And I'm not sure if you can see, but compared to my other sock, this one is huge. And these socks were knit out of Lana Grossa Meilenweit, which I think they're quite popular. They have amazing colorways, which is why I gravitated towards this one. I think the colorway might have been called Bali. But yeah, I really, really like this yarn. I thought it was super soft, but unfortunately it grew like crazy. And I knit this just the same way as I knit all of my other socks. I knit, again, I knit this quite a while ago, but I always did the same thing. And this is the first and only time that socks have grown and just kind of, lo uh, they've lost all of their shape. I tried washing it, I tried putting it in a dryer, but these socks are just terrible. And I think after showing you, I will actually throw them away. Because I used to still wear them, but they were totally baggy and just ridiculously baggy. In fact, my boyfriend um, started wearing these at some point, even though he has uh, like four sizes bigger feet than I do. Because they're just so loose and stretchy and it's not the gauge. Like if you have a look, I, I, I knit this on, I think even two millimeter needles, so size zero needles. And it's not like the stitches are all loosey goosey. I'm not sure what happened. But uh, this sock is the reason why I have refrained and never bought my invite yarn again. And I don't know, maybe I was just really unlucky because, like I said, they have great colorways and lots of people seem to like them. I don't really think I did anything wrong, but yeah, I'm really, really unhappy about this because I think they have a new collection called India and they have beautiful colors, but I'm just definitely staying away from this yarn now because that was quite disappointing, especially because this was knit at a time when knitting a pair of socks took me a lot longer than it does now. Um, I will just move these out of the way. Now to move on to happier socks. Um, this is also a yarn that I talk about all the time. And this is by Zauberwiese. So I don't know why I keep talking about Zauberwiese all the time and I'll talk about them some more later. But I really, really love their sock yarn. Again, they're an indie dyer in Germany. And this is their robust sock. So this is their standard 75-25 sock base. And this one is definitely sturdy. It is a lot more sturdy than, for example, Tausendschön that I showed you before. But again, I really, really like this. And, oops, and this is a great sock yarn for everyday socks. So I have quite a few socks in this space. I just chose to bring out these ones because I thought they were really fun and they were handy. But yeah, it is a little bit sturdier. But and again, it has worn really, really well. There's a tiny bit of pinning at the bottom, which just seems to be what happens with my socks. But again, I've worn them really hard. I have, I have thrown these in the washing machine at 30 degrees or even 40. And then they just come out fine and they shrink right back up when you put them in the washing machine. They don't grow, they don't get um, baggy. And yeah, I really, really love this yarn. Like I said, it, it definitely is sturdy. So if you don't like sturdy sock yarns, maybe you won't like this. But I really love their yarn and I think this is really fun. The only thing that I noticed about this pair, pair is that you might see that the colors are quite different. So one of them has a lot more pink and the other one has a lot more like yellow and green in them. But honestly, I really like them. I think they're super colorful and I like how the rainbow yarn pulled in this strapping sort of way. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with these. And the last pair of socks that I wanted to show you, I finished not that long ago, I think in December or maybe January. And it's this pair of socks. 
and these are by another story that I really love and I found them at a young folk festival I've never heard of them before and they're called Ponderosa or Ponderosa Wolle and they're on Etsy and this is their luxury sock base so I can't talk about their standard sock I can only talk about their luxury which is an high twist 80% merino 20% nylon and the colorway is called punk Braut, which means punk bread and I showed them to you when I finished them but obviously I only wore them after I sh after showing them to you so I never got to tell you how much I love this base um, I remember when I cast these on and these were the first socks that I ever knit um, two at a time even just with casting on before I even knit a single round I knew that I, I loved this yarn because it was fantastic to knit with it's just I love high twist yarns, and but this one is a high twist, but it is super super soft. And I've worn these a ton. I think these are my favorite socks that I have in my sock drawer at the moment, because they just feel great. They feel soft, but at the same time they don't feel like super thin. Like they feel like proper wearable socks. I can't really describe it really well, but you can see. The, uh, I really like the gauge that I got with these, and all of these rendered on two point two five millimeters unless I have said otherwise. Um, there's just the tiniest bit of pinning on the heel, but again, I think that's totally normal. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of pinning, I must, I must admit. But yeah, again, I feel like they just hold the shape really, really well, and they just... I don't know why, but they're the most comfortable socks that I have, and like I said, all of these are 64 stitches, so they all have about the same fit. But these are definitely on my wish list. I definitely want to get some more of their luxury sock yarn. And saying luxury sounds like that it's super expensive, but again, it isn't. So yeah, lots of German sock yarn going on here. And I feel like um, German indie diaries are, for some reason, no one really knows them. I mean, um, I think Everyone knows the commercial yarn, so everyone is using Regia, Regia or Opel or all of these. But there's a lot of um, great indie dyed German sock yarn. One that I really want to try but just have never gotten around to is Bärenwolle. I'm sure you guys all know Bärenwolle because it is crazy, crazy popular with everyone. I would really, really like to try them. And then I have this list of, of about 10 or 15 other German indie, indie dyers who I'd really like to try. And I feel like German sock yarn is generally really affordable. So I think pretty much all of these socks, 100 grams cost me between 10 and maybe 12 euros, and that's about it. So I think compared to what you often pay in the UK, or I think in the States, but I don't really follow prices as much there, I think they're really, really affordable. And that's one of the reasons why I don't really knit with that much commercial yarn, because the difference between getting like an opal, which is which I would consider commercial, and a indie dyed German yarn is really just so little that I prefer the indie dyed yarns. But having said that, there's nothing wrong with the commercials. I like um, Regia. I had one bad experience with them, but I th when I did socks for my boyfriend, but I'm still not quite sure what happened with them. Maybe he did um, get them catch them on velcro or something because they just looked really really worn after we, yeah, he had worn them only once and I had actually hand washed them so they have never seen the washing machine but I think I might have just been unlucky because besides that I've made really really good experiences and I have been knitting socks for I think two or three years now and only once in my entire time of sock knitting did I have a hole in my sock and that was with a sock that I had worn and washed 10,000 times, so not the fault of the sock yarn or anything like that. So yeah, I feel like sometimes people think that hand-knit socks you need to treat really, really carefully and you need to, you can't wear them every day, and I totally would disagree. I wear um, hand-knit socks all the time, up to the point that I really don't remember the last time when I didn't wear hand-knit socks. And they wear great and they don't break. I still have some super old socks. I'm thinking about throwing some out just because some of them that I knit in the beginning are a little bit too tight or the foot is too short or something like that. 
but that's only like that's the only fault I have with them. And quality wise, I've never had problems. So yeah, I hope you find that you got you guys found that interesting. I'm not really sure how great this was. I just kind of I really wanted to share. So I think I will move on to the question from Pradalin. Um, no, actually I move on to. Oh, oh my god, I'm all over the place. And one thing that I really wanted to show you was my sock here and blanket. So I'm really sorry now I'm jumping all over the place. I knew that I should have written more detailed show notes. But I have been in a big sock yarn blanket phase this week. And again, I blame, blame this on Katie of inside number 23 because she's knitting the most gorgeous blanket and that just kind of made me interested in my blanket again. So I'll show you what I've done first. So right now my blanket looks like this. Yeah, so I guess it's getting large enough that it's getting difficult to show you guys, which is amazing. So I think since I talked to you guys last, I've added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares. And so this one is another Zauberwiese. Um, I used this yarn to knit four shorty socks or two pairs of shorty socks for my sisters. This yarn is the Tausend Schön that I showed you the socks with last week. That's the one where, um, in, with which I knit the this way, that way socks. Um, this is the Rikia yarn that I knit my boyfriend's socks out of in the one times, one times, all times, all times colorway. Um, this one is part of my color affection shawl, so it is the Sternenstaub wolle yarn. This one is another Tausend Schön. I just showed you the socks that I knit out of this yarn. Um, and these two are part of my acquisition, so both of these are um, Opo minis. So this one has these really, really nice shades, shades of blue. Actually, I think you can see it better if I hold it a bit further back blue and gray, gray and white. And this one I just knit literally before I started podcasting. And it has green and blue speckles. And yeah, it's a really, really interesting one. And this one, I've only used about half of the mini screen. And as you can probably see, there's completely different colors on the inside. So I will definitely knit a second square with this mini because I think it'll come out as a completely different square. Um, so as I already mentioned, I got some Opal Minis this week. So I ordered these because I just really, really wanted to have some. And I'll just show you like this really quickly. So essentially these are like the Minis that I think you got in the Advent Calendar. I'm not quite sure if, it's the, if that's actually the ones that were in the Advent Calendar or if they're just the same type. But it's just all kinds of sock yarn by Opal. And they were quite affordable. Um, I think I'll just show them more to you as I knit them into the blanket. And one of these um, little balls is 10 grams. So I figured out that I could knit two squares with one of these minis, theoretically. So I asked you guys on Instagram um, whether you guys tend to only use um, every mini once or if you knit more than one square out of a mini if you have enough yarn and I think half the people said that they only use uh, a mini once and the other half said that they use them more than once and just spread it out a little and that's fine so I thought that was quite interesting and I really didn't really know what I wanted to do if I want to really only have one square per mini or if I want to make most of my minis or I was quite unsure about that, but I think what I decided to do or what I think I will do is I will just keep the leftovers from the mini and then decide later. Because I did really want to, when I started the blanket, I wanted it to be a scrap yarn blanket. So while I really love the whole buying minis and mini skein sets and so that sort of thing, I kind of don't want this blanket to be another thing that I spent a huge amount of money on. I want it to be a scrap yarn blanket and so for me it doesn't really make sense if I can get two, two or three squares out of a mini 
it would just be kind of stupid not to use that and then spend more money to acquire more minis. So I think what I do is I'll just pop my leftovers from those little open minis and so on into some sort of Bradley bag and just come back to those later if I have used all my other minis or if I feel like it or like I showed you before, if, uh, you, if you can get two different squares, then I might just use them straight away because if they don't look the same, that's fine. I just kind of don't want two squares next to each other that look really, really similar. But yeah, so I think that's what I will do just because I think also here it is not that easy. There's not that many pl uh, places where you can get mini skeins from. And yeah, I think the main thing really for me is that I want to do this for fun and I want to use scraps and I don't want to produce scraps because if I order mini skein sets and then have half of them left over, I know I can swap them and so on, but yeah, I just want to make the most of it and I'm really trying to not overthink this blanket thing because sometimes I spend quite a long time thinking, you know, what kind of shade do I want to put in which place of the blanket and do I have enough pinks in there, do I have enough of such and such color in there, but I think in the overall picture it won't matter at all because at some point you'll have a huge blanket so it's not like anyone will notice if you use the same square twice and I think all the colors will kind of blend in the end so I'm really trying not to overthink this. Oh and I'm knitting my squares on a 2mm so size 0 needle and what I'm doing is um, I'm doing 49 stitches. and. Um, I'm doing the same increase technique as Danny of Little Bobbins is doing, and I think also Nina of the Knitting Expert. So I'm um, doing a central double decrease on my middle stitch, and that is the only stitch that on the way back, so on the wrong side row, I pull. And that gives you this sort of more pronounced um, middle section, which I think looks quite nice. I really, I really like it. I want my blanket to look as neat as possible and I think yeah I really like the look of that and as you might see all of my lines go in the same direction and I think I want to keep it that way so I don't want it to be like lots of people are doing this sort of X shape where you have a middle section and then the stripes go uh, the lines go in different ways I think I want to keep all of it all of the lines heading the same way so that's my sock yarn blanket and now it's getting really dark so I'm trying to hurry up and I'm gonna move on to spinning. I'm so sorry guys, I just changed locations because I realized that the lighting that I had wasn't very great and then I recorded quite a long segment and then somehow my camera didn't film it. So now I really don't know what to do anymore, I feel like this is going to be a terrible episode but I'm just going to power through it and probably you guys don't mind as much as I do. So for spinning this week, I finished what I was working on last week, which is a braid from Nunoko. Nunoko and Etsy, who are based in Wales. And I had been spinning on this, which is a braid called Patchouli. And it is a merino bamboo firestar blend. And I had spun it into singles and then I turned it into a two-ply and just finished it off. Um, like I mentioned before, I think I think I mentioned it already. Um, I didn't really I lost my spinning mojo a bit this week, so I just really wanted to just finish this, get it off the wheel, and get some new motivation by starting something new. So I don't know. I like the fiber, I like spinning it, but somehow somehow I'm not really really happy about the result. I think that there's so much um, fire star in here that it's almost a bit rough. Like the fiber isn't as soft as I want it to be, and I thought it would be gorgeous to blend the browns with the purples, but I'm not crazy about this, so if anyone wants to swap me for this, I'm happy to give it away. I think it's about 230 meters per 100 grams, but I would need to check on that. But yeah, I'm just happy to have this off the wheel. It wasn't really my cup of tea. I really enjoy spinning with sparkle things and trying new things, but then in the end, I really like just having my standard, more worsted style, merino, silk sort of blends on the wheel in the end. But yeah, I finished it. And then I wanted to spice things up a little bit. And Rachel, who has the Woolen Spinning po uh, podcast and who is well with pearls everywhere, 
she had been talking about spinning singles. So what I did is I pulled out a old sample that I had from Fawn and Fiber and I was actually for the first time in months and I started spinning on my drug spindle again and I spun up this little sample of singles. So this is singles yarn, it is not plied and this is a sample from Fawn and Fiber and I think it has merino alpaca and nylon shimmer in here, so this was really really fun to spin. Um, and what I've done is I've spun it into maybe sports weight sort of singles, but they vary a qu a quite a bit. Um, and I spun this in my drug spindle because I feel like with the spindle I have more control over what I'm doing. So even though I love my reel to death, um, especially with new techniques, when you spin on a spindle, you can really, really easily see how much twist you've put in and you can just add a little more or twist it back a little so you have less twist in your yarn, so you have really, really great control. Whereas with my spinning wheel, I know I always go too fast as well and I just spin, spin, spin and sometimes you don't really know what kind of yarn you spun until you're finished. And also it was just really fun to get back to my spindle. So when I finished spinning this, I really, really carefully um, round it up into a skein because with um, spinning singles you need to put less twist in than if you were applying it. So that means you need to find the perfect balance um, between um, you know not over twisting it but at the same time you don't want it to break when you're skeining it up. So mine broke once when I skeined it up but the rest was fine and then I had a hot tub of water and a really cold tub of water and I just soaked it in each like maybe five times to felt the singles a little bit. So now it is actually quite balanced, I think, or at least it was when I finished it. Yeah, you can see it hangs really well, slightly curls on it, up on itself, and more importantly, now the fiber is really, really strong. So before, if I had done this sort of thing, it would have just broken apart. But now, because the fibers just kind of attach to each other and cling to each other more, this is actually perfectly knittable. And I think now I feel more conf confident in spinning a larger amount of singles on my wheel. So yeah, I just really had some fun and I just wanted to spice things up a little bit and this didn't take me very long, so yeah. And for what I'm spinning right now is I'm spinning the BFL braid from All About Yarn that I showed you last week. So that was called Pink Boat on the Lake and I will try to insert a photo of my spinning here. So um, I decided to spin for socks again. So I showed you before my sock yarn that I'm in my hand spun that I use for my socks right now. And honestly, I just love spinning for socks. I didn't think I would, but I, I find spinning for socks so fun. And this time I decided that I want to chain ply my finished yarn or my, chain ply my singles. So I'm really trying to spin very thin in order to have a fingering weight yarn for socks in the end um, and I think if I manage to perfect my sock spinning for a chain fly that would be perfect because with spinning you have such great control over colors so while it is quite expensive and difficult to get a self-striping sock yarn um, you can just spin it yourself relatively easy easily if you know how to spin and I really really like have a control over which colors come in which um, order and that sort of thing. So I really, I really enjoy spinning for socks right now, and I want to perfect my chain ply sock yarn spinning. So that's what I'm working on right now. But I'm only really working on it maybe 10 or 10 minutes at a time. So I'm not getting very far right now, just because I don't know. I kind of lost my spinning mojo a little bit, and I don't want to burn myself out. So rather than just push through it. I'm just taking my time and I think my mojo will come back. So I might be spinning on this BFL for quite a while or maybe the spinning bug will come back and I will spin like a maniac again. We'll see. So um, Kalalin, who has the Colorful Creativity Podcast, almost blank there, and she asked me how long it uh, does it take me to spin 100 grams of singles. And actually a few people have commented that I seem to spin very fast. And I feel kind of awkward answering this question, 
because I feel like I'm not a professional spinner. I feel like lots of people are more talented and experienced with spinning than I am. But I do understand why you ask, and I think lots of people who have been asking me that spin on a spindle and spinning on a wheel is just a lot faster. I can definitely tell you that. Um, and how long does it take me to spin 100 grams? The honest true answer is it depends. Um, it depends, of course, on the thickness of yarn. So if I spin four socks, it'll take me a long time. But I can easily spin, I don't know, fingering weight singles or something like that. I can do 100 grams maybe two hours. It also depends on the fiber prep. So some fiber is just prepped really, really well and the fiber maybe works really well. So you can just spin that right up the braid or out of the rollag and just spin 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 and I tend to spin on a very small ratio oh fast ratio does fast ratio mean it's small or, or big I'm not sure anyways I, I spin on a really fast ratio which means that if you know what you're doing you can spin really fast with other yarns you have to maybe pre-draft more and you have to divide it up more and especially with fiber blends sometimes you have to be more careful because if there's maybe silk and bamboo the Silk might not draft out as thinly as the bamboo, so you need to pull a little bit harder on that, and so on. So yeah, that can definitely influence the time it takes me to spin things hugely. So really, it varies so much. Maybe the more experienced spinners in our group might have a better answer. I'd really, really like to know what you guys do. I told Kalalin that I was going to time myself and kind of get a better gauge of, because I'm really quite interested in that as well. But since I've been barely spinning this week, and if so, in tiny, tiny time increments, it just hasn't made sense for me to even check. So I will definitely get back to you on that. And yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about that. So now finally, I can move on to acquisitions. I feel like this is going to be a very long episode, but because I've spliced it up so many times, I don't actually know. I didn't think I was going to have lots of acquisitions, but I do. And the first thing that I wanted to show you was a really, really sweet package that I got from a boyfriend. So when I found out that I had to take my wisdom teeth out, I was really scared and he said he would um, make a care package for me, which I thought was really, really cute. And of course, the first thing I asked was, is it going to have yarn? And he kind of hinted that it might be something yarny, and I, but I honestly didn't really expect that much. I thought that maybe he'll pick up, you know, a skein of commercial yarn somewhere and yeah, I don't really know. But I got the sweetest package and the reason I'm only showing this to you now is because there went something wrong with the payment and shipping and then just that they didn't ship it but didn't let us know, so yeah, I don't know, it was a bit complicated but finally it got here. And I'll show you the card first, so my boyfriend actually drew me a card, which is really, really cute. And he has more little drawings inside, but I'm not sure if he wants me to share these. And he gave me some lollies. And then he ordered yarn for me from Zauberwiese. And I was just so impressed because I was so impressed that my boyfriend knew what indie dyed yarn I love. And I didn't expect him to actually get me indie dyed yarn. And I was just over the moon with it. And then I was really, really over the moon when I found out what kind of colorway he chose because I absolutely love this yarn. I think it is gorgeous. So this is the Zauberwiese logo. And he gave me, this is colorway Ying and Yang. And it is their linen sock. So it's 80% yarn, uh, merino, 20% linen, 400 meters per 100 grams. And as you can see, I really love these colors. I think they're gorgeous. It's not only like this heather sort of gray and white, but there's also gray, there's just lighter gray and darker grays in here. And yeah, it is just really, really beautiful yarn. And I'm just so impressed with them. I really didn't think that he was going to um, get me something so beautiful. And I'm just realizing there's some fluff on it. I'm sorry about that. Um, so I really, really love this and I have used their linen sock base once before and that was quite sturdy and I wasn't really sure if I liked it and I'm not a big linen fan. So I was really surprised that this one, even though it is the same base, it is a lot softer. This one feels like a completely different yarn. 
So I'm not sure, maybe they changed something slightly, or maybe I just was unlucky last time. But yeah, I really love this, and it's super soft, and I definitely want to knit something for myself with this. But then my boyfriend really also wants me to knit something for him out of this, because he really loves it too. So we'll have to see about that. But yeah, I'm just over the moon with it. I'm even considering knitting this into a shawl, because it might be too nice for socks. But yeah, I'm really, really impressed with the colors that he chose as well. So yeah, I think I should keep my boyfriend. And then what I didn't expect to have to show you this week was a huge package. So huge that I'm actually kind of embarrassed to show you guys. And that's because I already announced that I was going to order yarn after my tooth was uh, came out or was taken out because I, I said I was going to allow myself one bonus day of going crazy and ordering yarn because I just needed something to feel, make me feel better. And I went a bit crazy. So I think by now all of you guys know my love of fondant fiber, which that was based in the UK. And I just love her yarns, her fiber, everything that she makes is just gorgeous. So I very often stock her um, shop page which is just funandfiber.com and I actually stalked it today and saw that she has more gorgeous stuff and Rolex that I really would love. I went kind of crazy and ordered quite a bit of yarn and I didn't really expect it to um, come very soon but it arrived yesterday. So I'm not really sure where should I start. I think I'll start with the bonus that she gave me which is just so sweet. She gave me this set set of random Rolex and these are three Rolex I'm not really sure I haven't weighed these yet but this is a gorgeous sample pack I can, I can spend three minutes out of this and this is beautiful fiber I need to look up what it is I'm sure I can find the colorways in her shop but it's really really gorgeous and I didn't order this so I was over the moon with this it also had her card and a stitch marker and some tea in here, which I've already had. Shame on me. So that was really, really nice, and I didn't expect that. And yes, there will be quite a lot of crinkling. I'm sorry about that. Um, and then what else did I get? This is the first thing that I picked. Um, because it is fiber that I have never tried before. It's um, 100... It's, it's supposed to be 100 grams, but it's actually 120 grams because um, Deb's, um, Deb is so go um, generous. You always get a lot more grams than you think you will. This is um, Wensleydale, Romney March and Silk. So I've never spun with Wensleydale, Wensleydale. I've never spun with Romney. And I don't really know how to spin that, so I need to definitely find out. Because I don't really want to waste this. Um, the colorway is called Salvia, I guess. I'll just show it to you because I don't know how to pronounce it. But I think this braid is really, really gorgeous. And I'm not sure if you can see how much of a halo there's going on. This is so fuzzy. I think this is what fuzzed up my Tauberwiese yarn that I showed you before. This has a huge halo going on. and This is going to be a really, really interesting spin. And I think with the blue that just kind of goes through here, it's going to have a really, really nice effect. So yeah, not really sure what to do with this yet. I don't want to waste it. I want to make an informed decision, maybe actually do some sampling and figure out what I want to spin for. And yeah, I'm not quite sure yet, but I really love it. And this one smells really cheaply, which I like. Um, then the next thing I got, and I'm sorry if I just shook the laptop, I didn't mean to, was another one of her... Merino nylon blends because I love spinning for socks as I said. So this is her Metropolis colorway. Superwash Merino and Nylon Chrome Top. Again, it was supposed to be 100 grams, but I weighed it and it's 125 grams. So again, she was, it's super generous. Oops. Sorry about that. So this is quite similar to the one that I used for my socks that I'm knitting on right now. But this one has quite a, a, a lot more blue in it. And again, I want to spin this into a chain ply sock yarn. So I think if I manage to do that, that'll give 
another pair of super interesting socks. So in case you haven't noticed before, all I can do right now is spin for socks. I just really find that so interesting. And this is so soft and cuddly and oh my gosh, I love this fiber so much. And then I got this set of fun and fiber fuzzlings. So her fuzzlings are these sort of fiber nests. And I have uh, tried them before, but that was when I was pretty new at spinning and I didn't really know what I was doing and I was spinning on my spindle and I'm finding more and more that some fibers on some fiber press I really didn't enjoy on my spindle but I really enjoy my wheels so I'm really curious to see how how I like these and these are the Georgina fuzzlings in Falkland Merino and Silk and I love this combination I think Falkland Merino Silk might be one of my favorite yarn blends ever and I love these sort of colors, this like sort of fuchsia. There's kind of there's no white on the back, and I think this is going to be a super super pretty and interesting spin as well. So I can't wait to try this. And the next thing I got because my boyfriend loves it, so it's it's not something that I would have ordered, but I do agree with him that it's really really pretty. And these are another set of fuzzlings, what they call Lena or Lena, and they look like this. I feel like it's not focusing. Yeah, there we go. So these are Masan, Merino, Mulberry, Silk, and Shimmer. So I like that these have really interesting sort of fiber combinations. I do tend to go towards the Merino a lot because I love the Merino, but it's also really, really interesting to try new things. And like I said, my boyfriend loves this, so I, I just kind of thought, okay, if he loves it, I'm going to get it. And I thought when I ordered it that I might spin these two together and then do a two pack but now that I see them in person I'm not quite I'm not quite sure if I want to but yeah I'll, def I'll definitely do something with them and I love them and getting all of this gorgeous fiber has really really motivated me to spin more and just showing it to you now makes me happy again because I just love fun and fiber so much and because that wasn't enough, I really just needed to grab one skein of her yarn because I've never tried her yarn before and it looks gorgeous and everyone loves it. And I got this completely amazing skein of yarn. Look at that. It, isn't it gorgeous? So this is on her Spangle sock base, which is Superwash Merino Nylon and Selena. So it's a sparkle base. And you all know I love sparkle. It's on the Briga Dune colorway and it's 400 meters per 100 grams. So the colorway is Spanklaga, in case I didn't pronounce it correctly. And look at these colors. Um, honestly, I kind of just went for it when I ordered it, but I didn't really know if these were going to be my colors or if it was going to be too orange for me, because you guys might know that I'm not hugely into orange. I like yellow, I like red, but orange not so much. And I was just so positively surprised when I got this. It is so, so gorgeous. Look at these little speckles in the back. I think this this is going to be the most amazing pair of socks. So, yeah, I'm just really, really happy about all of my acquisitions. I know they're kind of crazy, and I feel kind of embarrassed showing you all of these. But, yeah, this has been the month of treating myself, apparently. And honestly, I have been feeling quite miserable, if I may say so, without sounding too whiny. But yeah, so this really just cheered me up and I mean, it's my hobby. I like to, you know, spend my money on things that I really enjoy. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. So that's it for acquisitions and that's definitely enough acquisitions. Um, and I will move on to coupon codes. So last week I mentioned that Lovely G from Portugal opened her own yarn store on Etsy. And she's dyeing beautiful, beautiful yarns. And I can't wait to get mine. Um, and she has gorgeous colorways. I can only recommend you check it out. So her Etsy shop is omgyarnandfiber.etsy.com. And I will, of course, link that in the show notes. And she has generously offered up a coupon code for the watch, uh, you viewers of this podcast. So if you enter the coupon code Happy Knitting, all capital letters, you will get 15% of your entire order until March 31st. 
And I'm so happy about this. I think this is super, super generous of G and I can only encourage you to look at her shop because I think it's really amazing that she's starting her own shop and she's actually pregnant with her third child. And I can't believe how much energy she has and how much work she's putting into her dyeing yarns. And yeah, it's just so amazing. I really can't wait to get her yarn because I really just want to feel it. And she's also dyeing fiber. So yeah, uh, make sure you, if you do buy something at her store, don't forget about the coupon code. And now I will move on to life in general. Um, so this week, last week when I talked to you, I was still a little bit down about my wisdom tooth extraction. And I was getting better and then I had a little bit of complications. So I had a, another appointment with a dental surgeon last Wednesday. And he took out my stitches early because I was having troubles with the stitches. And after that, I really started feeling better and I've been pretty much back to normal. So yeah, life is just normal and standard again, which is good. Um, and I feel really good to be off the painkillers because I feel, I feel like the, the painkillers really affected me. They probably affected me more than I realized at the time. So yeah, I'm really happy to be back to normal, as I said. Um, so this week we've done quite a few things because for both of us this was kind of our holiday week because tomorrow I will start my master thesis so theoretically it's back to uni even though I know that I can basically just work as much or as little as I want to and I don't need to work 40 hours a week it just felt nice to have a few days without that sort of thing on the back burner so on Wednesday, we were actually just going to go and pack my car somewhere else because where I had packed it um, right now, I had to move it for some sort of, I don't even know if they're doing like a circus or something. Anyways, I had to move my car and I asked my boyfriend if he would go with me because I still felt a bit unsafe driving because of all the painkillers and I was just kind of out of it. So we walked to the car park and started the car and... It did start, but it didn't drive, which was really weird. And in the beginning, I kind of got mad at my boyfriend because I know that my little car, which is a tiny little Fiat, um, sometimes it doesn't really like going into reverse and the gears are a bit shaky sometimes, but it really didn't work. And um, I started to realize that probably my handbrake froze in. So at that point I was um, scared and <laughs> called my dad and was like, how do I do this? What do I do? And I was getting all the numbers of the firm that would you know, come and fix it or whatever. And I was quite upset about it because this was all happening when it was really cold. So I had already kind of this image in my head of me or us standing in the cold for hours waiting for the car to be towed or whatever. And then I called my dad again and was like, can I just try it with force? And he was like, yeah, go for it. You can't really break anything. So even though I was actually quite dizzy and didn't really feel after driving, I um, got into the car because, you know, it's my car. So I kind of feel like I know, I know my car more than my boyfriend is. And I used a little force and suddenly the car jumped out of out of the park and uh, the parking spot and drove again so that was really really good I was really relieved because obviously it would have been expensive to fix it and everything and because the handbrake had been frozen it only made sense for us to actually drive somewhere to you know get the car back to normal so we spontaneously did, did a little trip so we drove to a really close by a little village that is really cute along the river Main. And we went for a walk along the river and then had a tiny little breakfast slash lunch at a bakery. And yeah, it was just a tiny trip, but it was really fun. And that was the first day that I felt a lot better. So for me, that day was just everything was great. And I suddenly had all the energy that I didn't have the week before. So I actually spent the whole day going for walks and running around the city and doing things. So that felt really, really good. And then on Friday, we went on a shopping trip because we found out that my boyfriend had 
gotten into the final rounds of interviewing for his dream job. So he had been having like phone interviews and now he got the invitation to go to the final round of interviews, which is super, super exciting for both of us. So we decided to go shopping at Wertheim Village, which is a big outlet center. And there you get like all the brand stuff, but relatively cheap. And I just came along to consult, but I didn't really plan on buying anything and I didn't really buy very much at all. But we had so much fun and it was great to, again, feel better again and be walking around and have some coffee and consult him on buying lots of shirts. And yeah, it was really fun. Um, besides that, I've been meeting up with friends. Last night we had a double date with my best friend and her boyfriend. So yeah, just lots of social activities and enjoying ourselves. And yeah, it's been really, really good. And... I don't know how I even got thinking about this, but I've just kind of been in a mood where I've been reflecting about things and remembering that a couple of months back I was quite often unhappy and not really, I don't know what was going on, maybe it was just one of those phases that you have, but I'm just realizing that in the moment life is really, really good and I'm really happy and all my relationships are great and yeah, I'm just really, really grateful for that. So, um, what else is there? Like I said, my boyfriend got the interview. Also, I found out that from now onwards, my boyfriend doesn't have to work weekends anymore, which is amazing. Because he teaches a lot of seminars and those have been mostly on weekends. But from now until July, I think, he doesn't have to work a single weekend anymore, which is really, really nice for us. Because it does kind of throw the schedule quite a bit if I tend to do my work um, during the week and then he works on the weekend and it just makes life a little bit harder. So yeah, that's really, really good. Um, so I think besides that, I don't really have much to tell you. So like I hinted a few times, I am starting my master thesis tomorrow. So if you haven't been watching before, I'm doing my master's in psychology um, and I will do my thesis most likely in social psychology. And I have been, I've been pretty slack about it, but I actually today started preparing for it because tomorrow I have my first meeting with the guy that I'm doing my thesis for. And I am kind of excited, but also not really ready to start this big project because I know that, you know, this is going to be something I'll be doing for the next six months or hopefully less than six months, but it will be you know, my major thing that I'll be doing for quite a long time, so yeah, I'm not really sure how I feel about it, but yeah, I think it'll be fine, and it'll be good to start a new chapter, and yeah. So I'm hoping that within the next few weeks, we'll hopefully have some more idea of where our life is going, and know if my boyfriend will be working at where he's um interviewing at the moment because of course it affects me a lot because I need to find a job as well and we would really like to um, organize our move and you know sort of start realizing where we're gonna live and which part of Germany we're going to be at and that sort of thing so it, start, it feels like things are starting to clear up and we're getting an idea of what will be happening so that's really really good. So I'm really, really sorry. I feel like I've been super rambly today and mostly just disorganized. I hope that you still watch my episode. I actually feel kind of weird about it. Um, but I guess if you're watching this, I did figure out it's okay to upload and I hope you guys still like it. Um, places where you can find me, you can find me on Ravelry as Wupfi, which is W-U-E-P-F-I. Um, and we have a Ravelry group called um, the Happy Knitting Podcast group. I almost just forgot that. So you can find that in the groups tab. And I make a thread for every episode. So there you will find um, my project notes as well as all the links. Or at least the names of the shops. I have been including the links. But then I kind of figure that... If I tell you the name of a story, you might as well just Google it and it might save me some time. So I hope you guys don't mind if I don't do that. Um, and you can find me on Instagram as the Happy Knitting Podcast. Also, I've been wondering 
you know how I usually put things in the bottom of a screen while I talk about it. Um, and I will definitely keep doing that for things that, like, especially for example, names of German brands or patterns that might be easy, uh, hard for you guys to find if you don't speak German. But about other things, is it really useful for you guys if I have the information in the bottom? Because obviously it takes quite a lot of time to find the right places to insert the little captions. So if you say that it is useful for you, I'll definitely keep doing it. But if you guys don't really care, um, please do let me know because I feel like sometimes everything is doubling and tripling because it will be in the show notes anyways. So if you guys don't really care and are happy to look it up in the show notes, let me know. So thank you so much for watching and sticking through there with me until the end. Um, congrats that you made it until here. Um, and I hope to see you next week in a more organized manner. Um, I'm not really sure if my recording schedule is going to stick with Mondays or Sundays, but you will definitely see when the next video is there if you subscribe anyways. So I don't think it'll be a big deal and I'm most active on Instagram. So I will always post if I upload an episode on there as well. So you guys have a great week. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me. I hope you're all doing really, really well and I will see you next week. Bye.